If you live in the U.S., Canada, or several small islands in the Caribbean and have a phone number, you probably know it's usually written like this. You probably also know that the first three digits, the ones inside the parentheses in the first format and before the first hyphen in the second format, are your area code, and that these are assigned to you based on where you are, at least back in the days before mobile phones made this business complicated. These days, of course, your neighbor has a fair chance of having a cell phone number with an area code far from yours, and there's a good chance neither of you has a landline. But if you take a stroll in your local downtown and glance at the phone numbers on businesses and billboards, you can usually see a very consistent first group of three digits telling you which area code you're in. But if you've also taken a stroll in a downtown in the next area code over, you'd find that area code is probably completely different. Why couldn't whoever assigned these area codes just assign neighboring regions consecutive area codes, which would make them easier to remember? Today, I'll answer this question and a whole lot more. Welcome to 2 Lambda Plus Black. I am Heirua. Do kids these days even dial telephone numbers? If you dial telephone numbers in the US or Canada, you probably know that there's three lengths of non-international phone numbers that could be dialed. Seven-digit numbers, like 5550123. Ten-digit numbers, like 8725550123, which are really 11-digit numbers because you're supposed to put a one in front. And the very rare three-digit numbers, like 911. You probably also know that when you're dialing a seven-digit number, the telephone system understands that you mean to dial that number within your area code, for your convenience. These days, most phones have a call button that you're supposed to press once you finish inputting the entire phone number. But it wasn't that long ago when this wasn't the case. So the telephone system must be able to know whether you're dialing a three-digit, seven-digit, or 10-digit number so as to know when you finish dialing. How does it do this? Recognizing a three-digit number is pretty simple. The three-digit numbers are all of the form N11, where N is a number between two and nine inclusive, with one exception that will be mentioned later. To make these recognizable, area codes are not allowed to end in one one, and the first block of three digits in a seven-digit phone number isn't allowed to end in 11 either. Thus, when dialing into a system, the system checks if the second and third digits dialed were both one, and if so, understands that a three-digit phone number has been dialed and connects the call, and if not, waits for more digits. These three-digit numbers are typically assigned to certain lines deemed worthy of being easy to call with numbers easy to remember. 911, the emergency number, is by far the most famous. Some of the less famous numbers include 311, which connects to non-emergency municipal services in many areas, and 511, which provides traffic information. With the three-digit numbers out of the way, numbers with and without an area code can be differentiated from each other by whether there's a 1 dialed at the beginning. But decades back, this one was not required, and it was possible to differentiate seven-digit from ten-digit numbers before the finishing of dialing, despite this one not being here. And to explain how that was possible, we will launch into the history of North American area codes. The North American Numbering Plan, abbreviated NANP, was implemented in the wake of World War II. Prior to this, Different areas of North America had all sorts of different conventions for how phone numbers worked, and a universal plan aimed to, among other things, make North American phone numbers less of a mess. Many areas already started using the first digit of a phone number as a sort of area code, what would eventually become the middle group of three digits in the new system. Specifically, phone numbers in many areas before the NAMP were often written as several letters followed by several numbers, where the letters were an abbreviation for the city or district in which the telephone exchange was located. Telephones came with letters on the number buttons so that one could know which numbers to convert the letters to. 
under the NAMP, phone numbers of the two-letter five-digit format got kept and phone numbers not in this format got converted or padded to this format before the area code got tacked on in front. Now, here's the key. Notice that no letters are assigned to the digits 0 and 1. Thus, a phone number that's the result of converting from two letters followed by five digits is guaranteed to not have a 0 or 1 until the third digit. Hence, the NAMP's original set of 86 area codes all had a middle digit that was either 0 or 1. Thus, the telephone system could, upon the second digit inputted, know whether an area code was being dialed. If the second digit was a 0 or a 1, the system would know to expect 8 more digits. If the second digit was higher than a 1, the system would know to expect just 5 more digits. A substantial amount of intentionality went into the assignment of the original geographic area codes. Intentionality that very understandably, but unfortunately, did not come with vision of the world decades in the future. Area codes that were similar, including consecutive numbers, were intentionally assigned geographically far apart to avoid local confusion. Of course, well in the future as advancing technology kept bringing the world closer, this factor didn't really matter and just caused area codes to become harder to remember. If you're familiar with the story behind the QWERTY keyboard layout, this is a parallel story. On top of this, area codes were assigned with consideration to how rotary phones worked, in which 1 was the quickest and easiest number to dial, and 0 was the longest and hardest. In consideration that large cities with business centers will probably receive the most calls from across the country, the easiest to dial area codes were generally assigned to areas with the largest cities. Area codes can't start with 1, and codes ending with 1-1 one -one were reserved for special calling codes and not used for a geographic assignment, so the easiest to dial area code was 212, which was assigned to New York City. 213 and 312 were assigned to the regions containing Los Angeles and Chicago, respectively. Of the original 86 area codes, 5 were assigned to New York, 4 each were assigned to Pennsylvania, Ohio, Illinois, and Texas, 3 each were assigned to Michigan, Iowa, and California, 2 each were assigned to Ontario, Quebec, Massachusetts, Indiana, Wisconsin, Minnesota, Missouri, and Kansas, and every other U.S. state and Canadian province had one area code for the entire region, except for the entire Canadian Maritimes, which shared the 902 area code. All the states and provinces with multiple area codes were assigned codes with middle digit 1, and all the states and provinces with one area code were assigned codes with middle digit 0. I've seen various sources claim that the assignment or the distribution of area codes was done by population, but this claim runs counter to population data for either. As for assignment, Los Angeles, which got 213, was at the time just passing Detroit, which got 313, in population, and would not pass Philadelphia, which got 215, until a few years later. As for distribution, North Carolina was already well ahead of Iowa in population but the former got one code and the latter got three. Rather than population, area codes were assigned based on number of local phone exchanges, which better captures actual telephone usage. I also want to note a strange pattern I noticed while researching the original area codes. Whoever assigned the original area code seems to have deliberately avoided using area codes whose digits add up to 12. Here's the distribution of the 86 original area codes by the sum of their digits, which makes it quite clear this avoiding of specifically these codes must have been intentional. I was unable to find any source that would explain or even remarked on the existence of this phenomenon. If you have theories as to what's going on here, or have stumbled upon the official explanation, please leave it in the comments or otherwise let me know. I would love to know. As time went on, the population of the U.S. and Canada increased, and more importantly, a rapidly larger amount of the population used phones. As such, area codes eventually used up all of their possible numbers, and new area codes had to be assigned. These got assigned via splitting or overlaying. In a split, 
One original geographic area code got separated into two regions, one of which kept the original area code, and the other of which got assigned the new area code. When a split occurred, whichever area was smaller and had the larger city usually kept the original area code, with the larger, sparser region getting the new code. In fact, this splitting rule was followed so consistently that in 90% of U.S. states, you can find the primordial area code for that state by asking, what is the largest city in this state, followed by, what area code is used in the center of this city? There will be an area code whose middle digit is either 0 or 1, and remembering the rules of assignment laid out before, if the middle digit is 0, then this area code was originally this state's only area code. And if the middle digit is 1, then this area code was one of this state's original area codes. I'd like to briefly return to the digits adding to 12 phenomenon. Whatever reason there could have been for avoiding area codes whose digits add up to 12 was a reason that expired in just one year after the assigning of area codes. Why? Because just one year into the implementation of the area code system, the first split was made, in which the new area code 219 was assigned to the Gary, Indiana area. And this area code, my friends, has digits that add up to 12. Okay, back on track. Overlaying involves keeping an area code's geographic region the same, but assigning a new area code on top of it so that that region now has more than one area code. The advantage overlaying has over splitting is that no one presently in the region has to change their full phone number, but the downside of overlaying against splitting is that you can no longer assume the area code of other people in your region. In the early days of NAMP, splitting was the method of choice for the introduction of new area codes, but as time moved onward, overlaying became more and more relatively popular. These days, nearly all new area codes are introduced via overlaying. Some overlaying area codes overlay multiple previous regions. We'll go through two examples of splitting and overlaying in action. Utah is a state that has undergone one splitting and one overlaying. Its single original area code was 801. When a new area code needed to be assigned, a split was performed, and 801 got shrunk to just the central population corridor, according to the rule explained prior, with the rest of the state being reassigned to 435. Eventually, 801 became not enough for this central region, so area code 385 got overlaid over it. The Northeast Illinois region, including the city of Chicago, was originally assigned the area code 312. When 312 was no longer enough for the Chicago region, 312 got shrunk to approximately Chicago proper, and Chicago's suburbs and outer areas got assigned 708. When 312 became not enough for even Chicago proper, 312 got shrunk again to the central region of Chicago, with the rest of Chicago receiving 773. And 708 also got split into 847 for the northern areas, 630 for the western areas, and 708 staying for the southern areas. Eventually, all three of these got overlaid with 224, 331, and 464, respectively, and 872 got overlaid over both the 312 and 773 areas. But wait, you might say. Some of these new area codes have middle digits greater than 1. Wouldn't that create a problem with phone systems recognizing whether an area code is being dialed? Indeed, as much as splits of area codes tried to stay with middle digits of only 0 and 1, eventually all of these area codes ran out, and area codes with middle digits higher than 1 had to start being assigned. And that is when the 1 before the area code began being required to be dialed, because now they had to be disambiguated. Of course, these days you're probably using a mobile phone that just deals with all of this for you. In the expansion of area codes to middle digits higher than 1, though, the NAMP decided to look ahead and reserve some area codes for non-geographic purposes. 
All codes with a middle digit of nine were reserved and not assigned, in preparation for far in the future when all three-digit area codes have run out, in which case a second digit of nine is intended to indicate that an area code longer than three digits is being entered. Thus, there are no geographical regions in the NAMP with an area code with middle digit 9. There are also no geographical regions with an area code whose second and third digits are the same. Taking a cue from reserving N11, all of these codes got reserved for special purposes. The most famous case of this is toll-free numbers, originally assigned the area code 800 or 800. When 800 numbers ran out, 888 also got assigned to toll-free numbers, and later 877, and eventually 866, and so on. We are currently in the midst of assigning 833 toll-free numbers, and when those run out, we will go to 822. It might seem like that's the end of the line, but it turns out we've prepared for the future a bit more in this case, reserving all of the 880s for toll-free lines after the exhaustion of 822. Here is a special case of NXX. Remember near the start of the video when I said there is one more three-digit telephone number that will be mentioned later? 988 is that number. And starting this coming July, you will be able to dial 988 to connect to the U.S. National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. Unlike with the N11 numbers, though, People haven't been prevented from getting 7-digit phone numbers whose first group of digits is 988. So with this rollout, inputting the area code becomes required for contacting people whose 7-digit phone numbers start with 988. Canada and the United States have the majority of the NAMP area codes, but there are a handful of other countries and territories that eventually joined the NAMP. All Caribbean countries except Cuba and Haiti are in the NAMP. Many of them have area codes derived from an abbreviation of the country's name in telephone code. For instance, Antigua and Barbuda has 268 for ANT, Grenada has 473 for GRE, and Trinidad and Tobago has 868 for TNT. Unfortunately, calls to these countries constitute international calls, Frustratingly making it such that just because a telephone number looks like a U.S. or Canada phone number doesn't mean it won't incur international charges when dialed from the U.S. or Canada. There have been telephone scammers that use this. On the topic of area codes being telephone codes for countries, it turns out CAN, or 226, is indeed in Canada, and USA, or 872, is indeed in the United States though this is probably coincidence. 226 covers the southern tip of Ontario, and 872 is the overlay over Chicago proper mentioned earlier. Each U.S. territory has its own area code, as does each British Caribbean territory. Most awkwardly, St. Martin also has an NAMP area code, but not Arriba and Curaçao, the two other Caribbean constituent countries of Nederland. There are a few more area codes that are notable to point out. Guess what the area code for the region of Florida that includes Cape Canaveral, where the Kennedy Space Center resides, is. 3, 2, 1. The area code 867 covers the entire Canadian Arctic territories, which seems like a lot, but remember, the territories together only have about 100,000 people, making 867 both by far the largest area code by area and by far the smallest area code by population in mainland North America. Oh, and what's 867 in telephone code? T-O-P for the top of the world. Finally, the infamously named town of Hell, Michigan happens to reside in area code 734, calculator code for Hell. And best of all, I think this last one was probably a coincidence, unlike 321, which was assigned intentionally. Looking back at the history of area codes, I think there's a lot to be learned. Lessons about backwards compatibility and propagated complexity, lessons about planning for a future far different from that which one imagines, and many lessons about trade-offs, trade-offs, and trade-offs. Incredibly, 
we now have enough area codes remaining that by the time we use them all, this concept may have become completely irrelevant for the vast majority of people. But these stories in planning and decision making are ones that pop up again and again from field to field. And even if the relevance of area codes ends, the relevance of the ideas underlying its journey will continue. As always, thanks to all of my patrons for helping to make 2 Lambda Plus Black videos funded. And, of course, remember to love the night. <laughs>